<laughs> finally on today's program, I took a road trip to the store. Now that may not be shocking to many of you because I like to spend money and I love to shop. But what is shocking is what I learned from the professionals at CBC and Braintree. They say that brewed beverages of all kinds are enjoying a ridiculous amount of success and that today's consumer is smarter than ever before, which means that the whole staff at CBC, including owner Kay Young, has to be smarter too. This is Jeff from With Jeff, and we're with Kay Young over at CBC in Braintree, really Weymouth Landing, talking about how you run a local business in this region on the South Shore. And I think she's a franchisee, is that correct? Correct. So each uh, franchise is individually owned, um, but we belong to a franchise. How do you, um, I guess, make contact with suppliers locally, and how do you keep those relationships going? Because running a business that way is, it's so important. Correct. So I think uh, the most important thing that we take from this business, and, and not everyone does things this way, but the way we operate is that it's not all about beer. It's about relationships. That's the most important, that's the most important thing. Um, we are supporting people who make a product um, and that understanding and being educated about that is extremely important to us and understanding that this is people's passion and they, they're doing something that they love really um, comes into play when we talk to them about their product and their passion and um, how we buy it, how we sell it. When you and I talked before, we talked a little bit about local and how important it is local. I mean, you go to a restaurant and they're all promoting the farm to table mm -hmm. movement. They're all promoting things that are locally sourced, locally grown. You're doing sort of the same thing here by dealing with companies that are based in Woburn, based out in Harvard, based, I don't know if you have uh, companies that are based here on the South Harvard. Shore, but. Absolutely, uh, we carry a few breweries. Actually today, just got a delivery from Mike from Shakespeare, uh, and he's based in Hingham. We have Entitled, really? Entitled okay. from Hingham. Um, Barrel House Z is from Weymouth, a new brewery in Braintree, Widowmaker is going to be opening. Um, local is extremely important to us, but one important thing that we have to remember is that just because it's local doesn't mean it's good, um, which I think that sometimes falls through the cracks. Um, how do you make that decision? I mean, as a business owner, how do you evaluate yep, product and how do you evaluate when, if they're a good business? Yeah, um, I think it starts with the, the person. Um, the story, the interaction that you have, um, how they present themselves, uh, how long they've been doing this, how long they've been brewing, if they've been home brewing, how much of a passion this is for them. Uh, and then most importantly, we try the beer. Um, we try the liquid that they bring into us. Um, we also understand that different styles are uh, a part of what we do and just because we might not personally like it doesn't mean that it's not for someone out there and doesn't mean that it's bad it just means that it's not our jam um, but you know we if the liquid is good we will taste customers on if we open a can and um, you know we really try to support local as much as we can we keep all the local beers up at the front of the store so it's the first thing you see when you walk in how do you communicate with customers to find out really what they like and I guess make decisions in running the business and what inventory to carry? Well, that's, uh, it's hard. Um, you know, we have probably about seven to 800 different beers from about 300 different breweries. So we're constantly uh, rotating, date checking, making sure everything is fresh, talking to the, um, the breweries, what's new, what's coming out, people are asking for this, and every area of the state of the country completely varies on what styles they're looking for based on the demographic. So we have to be conscious of that too uh, when, we bring in, when we bring in beers. Uh, number one most asked for style down here is IPAs, which I figure is, is most places in the state, um, maybe in the country. Um, but we have to be very conscientious of what customers are looking for. The customer is always right. That's what we are here for. Um, and we want to give them what they're, what they're asking for. Uh, relationships with distributors and breweries, 
very important also. A lot of uh, local breweries self-distribute, which means they don't go through a greater power. They literally load up their truck and they drive it, uh, they drive it to the store. So um, keeping close touch with them is very important. We want to know what's new. We want to know what's coming out, how we can help them. I mean, their, their passion um, is just like our passion, getting good beer out to the people. Talk for a minute about running a local business. I mean, was it always your dream to be the the queen of the castle, to own something and really put a mark on the business landscape? Um, that's a great question. I started, um, my best friend owns a brewery up in Portland, Maine. Um, and he, I started off for him when they first started doing tastings and events and I loved it. Interacting with people was great. I always got in trouble at my corporate job for talking to people too much. So, I mean, I feel like what I do um, and talking too much just goes hand in hand. But um, we knew we wanted to come to the South Shore. Uh, we knew that something was lacking down here. And we wanted to be part of a residential community. So it was very important for us to look for a location like that. And we found it here. We're in the landing. There's going to be um, apartments built across the street. But we've got great restaurants that locally have stuff on, on tap and customers that come in with their dogs, their children. And, you know, we're, we're seeing them grow up, which is, which is just as important as selling them beer. Is it almost a throwback to, like, the five and dime? And oh, absolutely. The- absolutely. We keep dog treats up front. We keep lollipops for the kids who come in. We know people. Like, that's Brian. Hi, Brian. I know I know what he's looking for. Like this is the stuff that we wake up for and come here every day is that we uh, not only know people by name and what they like and how old their kids are and that we're going to have to card them because we know how old they are. Um, but we also, you know, meet new people. Like we're still getting new people who have never been in here. And that's exciting too. So you have both sides of the coin that, you know, we're thrilled to be in this area. Braintree has been absolutely wonderful to us the mayor the community um we're incredibly grateful to be here what lessons can you tell someone that might say wow Kay young is doing such a fabulous job over at cbc i want to run a business how do i do that how do i aspire to be her it is very hard work and not as glamorous as it looks. Um, you know, you see us having fun and talking and trying beers and um, cracking open something cold, but on the back side of things, we're paying bills and we're scrubbing the floors and we're cleaning the toilets and we're making sure the fridges are stocked and we're, you know, there's a, there's a lot of hats to be worn and you need to be prepared for that as a small business owner, not only the, what customers see, but what your parents see, what your friends see. That's the, that's the important part that happens on the backside. What's the goal? To be like Anheuser-Busch at some point or to no, be, I mean, are you the next Walmart? Uh, I, I wish world domination was in the cards. Um, I think that it's to create an atmosphere where people are comfortable um, to create an environment where we can foster education and teach people um, and to have them learn something. If you leave here learning something, even if it's that we keep lollipops up front from when children have meltdowns in here, then I've had a great day. I mean, that's what we, that's what we do. Um, I think that our, it's funny, people ask, what's your goal? What do you, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years? I see ourselves right here in five years and I want to be no other place. Hey, this is Jeff Cutler from With Jeff, and we're at Craft Beer Cellar here on the Weymouth Braintree Line with uh, Kay Young, who just changed her name. She yes. just got just got married, so I'm getting used to the naming convention. I'm getting used to it also. Yeah. Um, but when you talk about conventions and you talk about beer and you talk about craft beverages, I guess the biggest convention is hops, and they're all the rage because people these days are over hopping or precisely hopping or what do you call it when someone's using hops to change the flavor profile of a beverage? Well, hops are uh, traditionally used for stability purposes or aromatic um, taste bittering 
um, purposes. But when we first opened uh, almost four years ago, the questions we were getting about hops then versus what we're getting about hops now have changed completely. Um, and part of that is because the consumer is much more ed educated about hops. Instead of just using the word, I want something hoppy, they now know how to describe hoppiness. It could be floral, it could be fruity, it could be tropical, it could be juicy, it could be piney, it can be resiny. So in that, breweries have also learned how to use hops in order to impart that so that customers uh, not only know what they're asking for, but are getting what they're asking for. Well, you sort of blew my mind when I was in here earlier, just setting up for the interview, because you mentioned that over at Lord Hobo, the Glorious is a single hopped yes. beer. I didn't know you could do more than one hop. Yes. So a lot of um, beers traditionally, um, when they hop, they use a bunch of different hops, which also leads to new hops being created. So sometimes in beers, you'll see something that says experimental hop HB47-2, which means that it's been um, identified, but just not named yet. Um, so a lot of breweries are now, because of the education of hops and the different uh, flavors that it can impart in a beer, are using either a multitude of hops to change the profile every so often. Like Night Shift has a beer called Morph, and the hop profile will change every time they brew it. Um, Glorious from Lord Hobo is a single galaxy hopped pale ale, which means that you can really pick up what that hop tastes like means um, different nuances because you know that only Galaxy is used in that. So, so when they're doing that, using different types of hops, it's almost like being a chef and saying, hey, if I put in a certain amount of salt or a certain Absolutely. spice or a certain food, it's going to affect the yep. overall. And so with, with Morph, you can see um, every single time it changes, you can look on their website and it'll tell you what hops are in it and then what flavors you're going to be getting so that every single batch is totally different. Some might be bitter, some might be piney, some might be floral, which uh, we've come a long way. Now, as a business owner, how tough is it to know all these things? Because I know I'll go into a bar and they'll give me the beer list and say California or, North, well, I don't know, Pacific hops or whatever they say are with that type of beer. You've got thousand different types of beer here, a thousand different types of like craft ciders. Everything's craft now and you have sours and just random bottles of beverages here. Um, how tough is it to know everything? It's, it's hard, but we are surrounded by this every day for hours and hours and hours. So we have no choice but to learn. I mean, by no means are we experts. Um, you know, I, we know uh, maybe more than the average bear, um, but we drink a lot. And, you know, some people might seem that seem like that's glamorous, but um, we have to learn by tasting. We can't talk to someone about an IPA if we haven't tried it or if we know, if we don't know what the flavors are like or, you know, what, what the process is like. Now, if someone walks through the door and says, hey, I want something that's not too bitter, that will be easy drinking and will taste like lavender, or who knows mm -hmm. what they'd say. You can probably identify oh, yeah. a few. Um, and I, I think it's, it. when we first opened, I was genuinely terrified of the phone ringing because I was afraid someone was gonna call and ask a question that we didn't know the answer to. Um, and then the first question was, what hours are you opened? And I was like, oh, I got this, I got this. And so the questions would progressively get a little bit harder and some are asking for specific beers. Um, but, you know, we take, we order um, every week. We're aware of what's available, what's not available. So that when a customer asks, we don't have to put them on hold and run around the store or look it up in the system. We, we just know if it's, if we have it, if we don't have it. That's perfect. Are vendors from different um, breweries pretty helpful? Like if the Lord Hobo people come down or whoever their carrier? Absolutely. I mean, I think they know that relationships are as important um, as beer. And, um, you know, you're, we are important because we need to be educated and know about their product and sell it the way they would want it sold. So we get a lot of our education from the reps that come down, from 
uh, John, the Lord Hobo rep, and Mike, the night shift rep, I mean, we, they come in and they, we say, what do we need to know about this beer? How do we talk about it? What, you know, what information should we be passing on to the consumer so that they're as educated as they possibly can be? That's great. Now, I guess we're going to do a little tasting yes. here, but let's pause. I'm going to get into my drinking shirt because okay. you were kind enough to get me a, a CBC shirt. So I'm going to change into right. the shirt and sounds then good. and then we'll do a little tasting. All right. Sounds good. Okay, we're back. I've changed into my craft beer cellar shirt, and Kay and I are going to go through a number of ciders and then a couple beers. We have two ciders, no, three ciders here, and two beers, and hops are used in each one. So come along with us and watch. So a few things about the ciders. Dry hopping cider is a relatively new um, phenomenon, at least in the commercial industry. Um, so I've picked three um, dry hop ciders from Massachusetts. The first one, uh, Far From the Trees, the name of the cidery. Nova is the name of the hop cider. They're in Salem. Husband and wife team originally had studied winemaking um, and then realized that Salem, Massachusetts, doesn't have the climate for grapes. Yeah. Um, so they opened a cidery, and it's... Uh, it it's wonderful. Um, we do a lot with their seasonals, but the dry hopped one is the one that does um, does the best. So I poured a sample um, for, for each. Cheers. Cheers. So before you taste, always smell. It smells, well, it smells like cider. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things. Yeah, it tastes a little flower, like exactly. plant flower. Exactly. So People are sometimes intimidated by the name dry hop cider because they're afraid it's going to taste like an IPA. Most of the hops that are used in dry hopping cider is purely for aromatics. Dry hopping even beers, you're only using for aromatics as opposed to something that's going to change the flavor or the alcohol content. Now, does that confuse people when they're looking for a dry cider? Do they see dry hopped and think it's a dry, comma, hopped cider Correct. or a dry hop then, cider? Yes. And so, great question because ciders, the way beers go, um, you know, malty to hoppy, ciders go dry to sweet. Um, and so a dry cider and a hop cider can be two totally different things. And it could be a hopped cider that is dry or a hop cider that's sweet. Correct. Okay. It's like the Rubik's Cube yes, of so everything. Many combinations yeah. here. So many combinations. So um, Nova uh, is great. You, d you don't get, uh, you still get the cider, which is the main component. You still want to taste that. Um, but when it comes to the, um, the dry hopping, you get the aromatics of floral, which is a nice combination. Um, so the next. Next up, Storm Along. It's They're also a dry hop. Yep. Okay. They are in Sherburne. Sherburne, Massachusetts used to be the largest cider, refined cider mill uh, in the world in the early 1900s. So that's why they've, they've planted there. Um, now, this is a dry hopped dry cider. So um, some of the ciders we have can be very sweet. Yeah. This is a wonderfully dry dry hop. And if we go back to the Nova, mm -hmm. it was still semi-dry. It wasn't yes. like a sweet taste. Absolutely. But Absolutely. this is a drier dry hop. Okay. Doing the smell test. Always smell. Smell. It's not as floral as the Nova at all. Smell, yeah. I hope you guys caught that. I was smelling the microphone for no apparent reason. Yeah, that tastes like a traditional dry, dry cider. Yes. Now, the difference between ciders in the United States and in the UK, um, in the United States, ciders should be 50% apple juice, where in the UK, I believe it's around 30%. Um, so you get much more sweet, sugary. Adding sugar into the cider will increase the alcohol content. Um, so a lot of the ciders that have been hitting the market um, have been along the um, drier, less sweet side, um, which people have been trending towards. So, When you're doing the taste with this, do you do it like wine and try oh, and breathe over it? And Smelling okay. is just as important um, right. as tasting, absolutely. 
So now the next one uh, is another dry hopped session cider. Session means a little Prospe bit. So it's Prospect Cider Works, Correct. and it's a session cider. So session means less than 5%. Session can be beer, cider. You're meant to drink more than one in a session, and I think we all do that. Yeah. Um, but these are a little lower ABV, um, sessionable drinking. Mm -hmm. Now, Prospect Cider Works used to be Harvard Cider out of Harvard, Mass. They rebranded. Um, they wanted to keep part of their hometown uh, in the name, the rebranding. So they kept Prospect uh, as an ode to Prospect Hill in Harvard. Um, they found space in Roxbury right next to Bully Boy Distillers. So great location. Um, they'll be doing some stuff with Bully Boy's Barrels, which is another... Uh, in addition to dry hopping, people are also barrely. Well, people have done that a lot with beer, yeah, like absolutely. the Kentucky bourbon barrel yeah. ale and yeah, stuff absolutely. like that. Okay. So now the difference between this cider and these two is that on site they have their own house-made um, concentrate of alpha acids. Alpha acids from hops are the chemical component that makes it bitter. So this is probably the most hop forward cider on the market. And as soon as you smell and taste, you will see exactly what I mean. So smell first. Cheers. Whoa. So it doesn't smell new. Yeah, that, I um, if I think back to all the hopped beers that everyone's losing their mind over, this yeah. smells just like stuff that comes out of northern Vermont exactly. or places we've heard of. So it tastes much different. But it's still smooth. It's yep. not hitting you with the, the bitter beer taste. Yep. The, it's all in the aromatics. So they not only add the alpha acids to this, but they also dry hop at the end of it. So you get, it's very nice, a little bit of sweetness at the end, not a drying, um, but the smell right off the bat is... I may have a new cider. I... Uh, you know the cider that I drink. It's behind us on the rack, but I may have a new one. Yep, uh, speaking exactly of the prospect. Tastings, this is exactly what tastings are for. Um, you think you like something, and you figure out you like something else. So those were the ciders, and now these are two local beers that we have to highlight um, the multiple hops used in a beer and then single hops used in the beer. So the first one we have is Night Shift. They're up in Everett. This is called Morph, hence it morphs every time, changes the hop profile. So is this the, do the cans have the date on it? The and it's a different. The cans will have the batch okay, number. Okay, batch number and then right if there. if you go to the website, it'll tell you. So this one uses uh, Waimea hops and then Mosaic and Citra Lupulin. Um, Lupulin is when you open up a fresh cone, a fresh hop cone, it's a yellow powder inside, okay. which is what gives hops uh, beer the bitterness. But this is a multiple hop. Correct. Yep. So all three of those, Mosaic, Waimea, and Citra are used in this one. So Night Shift is great. They, they do a rotating series, but then they also have a beer called One Hop This Time, which is single hopped, and it rotates every time. So people who are learning about hops when you drink the single hopped beers, you can really pick up on that single hop, which then leads you to maybe noticing it in other beers, being able to pick out that specific hop in other beers. That's a little complicated for my little brain, but I, I think I get it. Keep drinking. Yeah, that smells, that smells like a hoppy beer. Yes. But nice, very well balanced. Yeah, it's smooth. It's still, now I can taste bitterness, but we're into beer other than cider. Very drinkable. And it's not a lawnmower beer. Nope. Not that smooth, but uh, yeah, you taste it. It has character. Yeah. Yep. All right, so the last one is uh, Glorious from Lord Hobo. They're up in Woburn. Um, and this is uh, one of the best beers they do. It's a single hopped, so only one hop is used, the Galaxy Hop, and this is their Pale Ale. Now, will this change at all? Will they use different hops, or nope. they'll just stick with this? Yep. Thoughts? 
And it's smoother than the Whirlpool. Much smoother, and it's one note. It's not a... You're not getting an overload of smell. Each yeah. other, you get one flavor, and that's what it is for the beer. They All, the, all of their other IPAs are um, a blend of different hops, but this one is purely Galaxy. Now let's talk um, IPAs for a second. I, I have a pure beer question. What is an India Pale Ale compared to an IPA? Or is that the same India Pale thing? Ale is an IPA. Okay. Same thing, just abbreviations. Um, the, oh, I sense laughter over here. Um, it's interesting, though, a lot of, um, a while ago, pale ales were one thing, IPAs were one thing, pilsners were one thing. And now, with everyone's love of hops, sometimes that line gets a little blurry. Well, the reason I bring it up is I talked to someone at Lord Hobo a couple weeks ago, and I said to them, well, you guys only do IPAs. And they said, well, we have a pale ale. And I said, but is it hoppy, or what is it? Mm -hmm. And in my mind, they're all IPAs, except is a pale ale really in that family? Yes. Um, it is, and traditionally, you know, there are English pale ales and American pale ales, and some are maltier than others, um, but, you know, that line gets blurred um, you, because breweries can hop things however they'd like to. Uh, you can make a hoppy pilsner. That's not illegal. You can make a hoppy pale. Um, and so when people come in and ask us, I want a pale ale, Again, it goes back to our education and tasting things so that we can tell people this is, it says pale on the can or on the label, but we've tried it. It's a little hoppier than a traditional pale. So it might drink like a session IPA. Um, so that's our job is to know these things so that we can give people what they're looking for. Let's do three more things. Yes. Let's do a recap of the ciders and the beers that we just had. So just give me the names. So first one. Uh, far from the tree, Nova is the name of the cider. The uh, cidery is Storm Along, and this is their dry hop. Prospect Cider Works, and the name is Missing Link. The name of the brewery is Night Shift, and this is the Morph. And then the name of the last brewery is Lord Hobo, and this is Glorious. Then the second thing is what's coming next? Are people going to get away from hops? Are they going to go towards sours? Are they going to go to hefes? Is it now just going to be the super highway of everything is out there and you just figure out what you want? Well, a few things. Um, IPAs are absolutely our number one most requested style, bar none, hands down. Um, sours are slowly creeping up, uh, which is great, very exciting. We always get excited when people ask us for multi beers. I love porters, I love stouts. Um, do you guys have a Doppelbach in stock? Um, that's the stuff that we get excited about. Um, IPAs are hands down number one. Um, we new stuff is coming in all the time from local breweries, um, so we it's our job to keep up with new stuff. And people go to breweries and do you guys have that stuff? I had this IPA, I had that IPA. Do you guys sell this? Can you get your hands on this? Um, that kind of thing. So IPAs definitely dominate, but it's it's nice to see that you know pilsners are coming back um but it's a nice it's a nice uh, with beer there's a time and place for everything um and so we take advantage of that and making sure that we understand you know what the customer wants why they want it where they're going what they're drinking it for are they pairing it with food are they going to the beach and so that will kind of temper what we suggest for people based on the situation that they're going to be in and finally how do people get in touch with Craft Beer Cellar? Uh, where are you located? Where are you online? And what do you do here? We are uh, located in Weymouth Landing. We are in Braintree. People have been calling it Weymouth Landing forever and ever and ever. Uh, we are in Braintree, um, 28 Commercial Street. You can call us. You can stop in, uh, visit us online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. Um, one thing differently that we do here uh, you can take singles of anything in the store. So at any given time, we have about 700 to 800 different beers in the store from probably about 300 different breweries. Um, 
local, uh, being upfront, and uh, we love promoting local, but also around the world. I mean, we've got a huge Belgian selection, Germany, England, Scotland, um, and ciders, meads, gluten-free. So we tell people to have at it. Very cool. Thank you very much, Kay. No problem. My pleasure. That's where I'm going to leave it for today. If you liked what you saw on today's show, get in touch with us at With Jeff. This show is driven by whatever scampers across my mind and gets me onto a soapbox. Another day in the city And one month from the phone Another week on the side streets Another hour alone I was a fan